So, hello and welcome. I will now be doing another live video and I'm going to be painting on candle holders and one of my lanterns, one of my very last ones. So, I have a live chat going here as well, so people are very welcome to just uh, chat and uh, ask me anything at all. I will be, if I answer something, I'm going to be saying uh, the question out loud or the comment so that if I upload it somewhere else later, then even in YouTube or something, people will be able to know what's going on. So yeah, you are all very welcome. And let's go. Cheers from Australia. <laughs> Cheers right back from Norway to Walter Berry. Watler Berry. Okay, so this is the one of my very last candle holders that uh, I will be painting. This was a uh, limited edition, so it's not going to out in the shop, but I have a great aunt who really wanted a candle holder, so that's why I'm still painting on these. And otherwise, I have quite a few normal ones that I want to paint a little layer on today. So that's what we're going to be doing. There's quite a bit still to do on this one. Um, I want to do quite a bit in the background first, but I just want to plant one tree. Hi, Ovil. <laughs> um, let's see. And I'm just going to have one tree here just to have some idea. And otherwise, I think most of it is just going to be background. Hi to Gabori. Um, yeah, so you're all very welcome to uh, contribute in chat. My goal is for this just to be a very relaxed little uh, time together here. And there's nothing formal about it. So you can chat with each other, you can chat with me, ask questions, or just talk about whatever you want. This is going to go on for quite a little while. I usually do these uh, live streams for at least one or two or three hours. So, yeah, and people uh, come and join and leave, and it's, um, I've often found it to be a really nice mood. And, yeah, I think I'm going to be going through quite a few different, uh, different things that I want to paint today. We are going to be leaving in about a week, um, in the camper van. So, I'm trying to get a few things done before we leave. Because we are going, finally, the weather is uh, getting better here. And this is the time that you can actually travel around in Norway in a van. And it's finally warm enough to do that. Can you see my art? I posted it. <laughs> I can take a look at it later. I can't take a look at anything right now. Yes, yeah, so welcome to all of you who are joining at the moment. Uh, so yeah, finally, it, where we can leave because springtime has finally arrived here. And I know for most of you, at least on the northern hemisphere, you probably had spring for quite a while, but now here it's just arriving. The last bit of snow is uh, melting as we speak, and the weather is going to turn now in a couple of days. Hello, Joachim. Another great painting in the making. <laughs> Much love from Greece from Alex. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm so happy about these live streams that a lot of uh, you already know me now. And more and more people are becoming regulars to these streams, which is something I really, really enjoy. So the thing with these lanterns is obviously they have four... Hi Joachim, looks amazing! To Sanja! Thank you. Sandia is a very old friend from Australia, where I studied for a while. And it's so nice of you to stop by here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I studied uh, for a bit in Australia. 
And Sandhya was one of my absolutely dearest friends. Very therapeutic to watch and inspiring, she says. Well, that is wonderful. Thank you. It was in Australia where I started to just slowly to draw a bit. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to have you here. I really think about those times quite a lot. <laughs> the first time I really was out and about in the world. Yeah, we even lived together for a while in Australia. Um, yeah, my God, that seems like such a long time ago now. Sorry, I just I got lost in memories there for a bit. <laughs> Hello from Germany. Looks amazing already. Thank you. From Hebskind. I like your art. It's perfect and amazing. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, thank you. That is very, very kind of you. Uh, much too kind, I find. But it's, uh, it's uh, nice. <laughs> So yeah, this lantern isn't going to be close to finished this time. Uh, as those of you who have looked in before know, I paint them in layers. Sandia says, I remember your drawings from back then when we lived together. They were always so beautiful and nature-inspired. Always thought they must be what the scenery in Norway is like. Yeah, very much so. They were memories at the time. <laughs> yeah, I can very much remember. A drawing in Australia. I, I used to make little landscapes from paper clay and so on in Norway. And when I was in Australia, I couldn't do anything like that anymore. And so I started drawing. And that's where painting eventually came from. So this has already been, this is the third layer already on this uh, lantern. Hello from Pakistan, Faria. It says, uh, hello right back. That's uh, wonderful. I really, really enjoy the fact that people are coming from all over the world here. And we already have quite a good mixture of international people. Uh, we also found uh, we are located in Norway, but about 98% of the things that uh, I uh, that we sell on our store actually comes from outside. So we sell almost nothing in Norway. And we have a very international audience, which I really enjoy. And yeah, the nature in Australia was just remarkable. Uh, so incredibly different. I did find, while it, uh, like Sanjay said, it did look quite a bit like Norway, that my trees look very strange after a while. Hey, hello, Creative Kunstreise. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, Australia is so incredibly different. Um, and that did seep into my drawings uh, eventually. I am from Oman. My mom tells me about your account. She really likes you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, your mother told you. That's brilliant that this is already being talked about in families. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Indeed, in such a noisy internet world, yours and Lena's calm, <laughs> calming attitude are therapeutic and inspiring. Alexa says, well, that is brilliant. That is something we are ab absolutely hoping for. Uh, the internet can be a very loud place. But I found that um, I know a lot of people say, okay, t and, and there's truth in it, uh, turn off your phone and go outside and so on. But one aspect of... Um, of it is to have things on there that are less noisy, I think. We'd love to see your painting Auroras. I love the northern lights. Yes, I am actually thinking about that. I really want to paint uh, northern lights. Uh, we just had some uh, a couple of weeks ago here. So I have some memories of it now, so I could. And I thought I wanted to do it in oil paintings first and then transition it to... Um, to a glass because I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it. I have some ideas how I'm going to do an aurora on, 
on a glass, but it's going to be a challenge. I think it would be nice to kind of uh, take some of the paint off and let it shine through or something. You know, so to the... Yeah, so I have an antidote to this uh, crazy internet world. Actually, on internet, I find it's a very good thing too. So let's not just uh, flee from the internet, but actually make it uh, have some pockets here that are a bit more calming and different. Looking forward to it regardless. <laughs> Very yes. Yeah, I, I am I am too. I really love the Northern Lights. And that's definitely something I'll be be doing. So let's see here. And we hope to be moving at some point and moving a bit further north. And there'll be a lot more northern lights there. Not that much further north, but at least further away from uh, light pollution, which is one of the more annoying things when watching northern lights is to have a city or something close by, because that's almost worse than being further south. So if we are going to be moving where we are hoping to move, it's going to be a lot, there are a lot less people there. I know it seems very empty for those of you who know where we live now, but that's even more empty. And the emptier it is, the better for the lights. I lived in Tromsø for a while, which is the northernmost big city in Norway. And the northern lights there were just amazing. So I really hope to be painting a bit more northern lights, absolutely. And I mean, it's such an iconic northern Scandinavian thing that I definitely have to do that. Yeah, so a lot of this is just, uh, I'm just going to go around it quickly and add add a layer and then we're going to move on to the next. So that's uh, like a lot of these, these painting on glass and porcelain, there's just a lot of layers. So you'll see me in these live streams, I paint on quite a lot different ones because I can't paint any one from start to finish because I have to burn them and that takes a day. So... In a day, I can easily paint 20 to 40 glasses. None of them, that doesn't mean I'm paint 20 or 40 glasses in a day. It just means that I have one layer and uh, all of them need quite a few layers to be finished. Um, and something like this, for instance, a lantern will take um, five, six layers before it's uh, finished. And this is kind of a midway um, stage for it. Which means that there's still not a lot of details to do. I'm done with the main background. Uh, but a lot of this is going to be in the background too. It's just kind of preparing the ground for the actual painting to come. Hakim Illustran says, Joachim, perhaps? <laughs> Heisen. I am not sure what you uh, mean. Let's see here. Yeah, and I would be doing some calming music on top of this, but I have tried, and uh, live streaming in Instagram blocks you pretty fast if you do so many music. So I'll have to find that for another time, how to do it. Because <laughs> I think it would be nice with some calming meditative music while sitting here and painting, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet.
have a pretty clear idea where I want this to go. So a lot of this is done preparing the ground. So I want um, I want the feeling of being deep in a pine wood um, of spruces. So this is all of this is just the background. Yeah, all right, so let's get to the <laughs> last part, and then I'll have to see what, what I want to continue on. I've been doing some forget-me-nots lately, and I think that might be nice to continue on one of those. I'm really looking forward to the spring now. I so love the calming water lantern. Unfortunately, it was sold out so fast. Looking forward to new lanterns in your shop, Herbskin says. Well... That's uh, very good that you are. The only thing is that these lanterns were... So this one, I am now only painting for my great aunt, who really wanted the lantern. And otherwise, the rest of them have been a limited edition. But I am going to do new lanterns in the autumn, I think. But they are probably going to be a different kind of lantern. Um... So I'll have to see what kind of a lantern I'm, I'll do for the next one. So they're not going to appear for quite a little while. Hello, Rahel. So yeah, the lanterns aren't... Um, so I think maybe this autumn, so maybe in October or something. But I'll have to figure out what kind of lanterns I want uh, for that. So the next project is actually going to be books. So I'll be... We have some wonderful books made of tree that we are going to order. And... I'll be painting on those. So that's the next project. Rahel says hello to everyone. Rahel is one of my more uh, loyal uh, live stream followers. And I thought this time, well, I didn't give every anyone much of a chance. I'm going to be um, announcing my live streams a bit more than yeah, I usually just uh, turned it on. But I am going to be announcing my live streams a bit more than I have so far. That suddenly got a lot darker. Oh. Uh, so yeah, so that uh, there's actually a chance to catch it if you wish. So I, I am going to do a bit more uh, announcing. This time I think I gave everyone about one hour. Um, but next time, hopefully, I'll, I'll do a little bit. <laughs> The announcement a bit more ahead of time. So yeah, I did notice the lanterns really um, quite unexpected. I did they would um, be such a success. So as I said, there are definitely going to be more lanterns, but um, later, and I think more in the autumn winter time. Which is, I think, fitting for lanterns anyway. And anything I promise uh, in this stream, I um, don't hold me to it because I never entirely know and we don't have a schedule for these things. It's just uh, ideas and uh, thoughts, uh, things that we think we're going to do. So yeah, uh, what I wanted to say is that I am really looking forward to spring because then I have the chance to learn a few new plants and so on. I did work a bit on the forget-me-nots last year, but I didn't get to paint any. So I have started now. So I have a few that I've been working on. And I think that's what I'm be doing next. So I think this one is actually, as far as I can do it this time, so we'll remove this. 
and start uh, not start continue this one is uh, one that i painted uh, yesterday started yesterday well not started i painted the flowers yesterday so i'm not entirely sure how it's going to continue if i want some colors in it or what i want at least more foliage and uh, i think some colors on the leaves and then i'll just have to see how it goes see here so I think just some color on the leaves first um, and then go around once and then can see I can see what what other things would be nice to do it's always a bit of a challenge to cramp in because I have the phone in front of me so that I can read comments <laughs> and at the same time I need to be quite close So yeah, forget-me-nots are definitely some of my most favorite flowers. Uh, and I, I really, really like, like them. But I haven't really been painting uh, forget-me-nots uh, yet. But I really like the shape of the, the, the plant, too. So yeah, the way I do it is that I um, like to learn them by heart first, so that I don't have to look at anything. But that often means that I do have to wait for spring to really learn new plants. But now that we are going to be traveling, I get a chance to learn quite a few new things on the road. And I'm really looking forward to that. We are both of us really very much looking forward to traveling a bit again. We both love winter, but it feels uh, we want to be traveling now. How are you doing? Have you been able to rest after so much work with the online shop lately? Well, yes, I did uh, rest a bit. I've been working quite a lot. The thing is that once I started to rest, I... Um, really wanted to continue. The thing is that uh, for enjoyment, this is what I do. So if I, I sometimes force myself to rest and, and not to paint too much, but then the thing is that what I would be doing for rest and enjoyment is painting. So I found myself back here preparing for the next launch but uh, i'm going to get quite a bit of rest now that we are going to be traveling then i can only paint uh, on my oil paintings and uh, not that much so i found that i'm just going to be painting for about a week now and this isn't for a launch that is going to happen soon this is for a launch that might happen more towards the fall or at least late summer because now that we will be traveling um, it's just nice to have it ready for later. So that's what I'm painting on now. And then the break is going to come once we start traveling in a week or two. And then I, I get a proper break. Because, yeah, there's been a lot of painting lately. But I thought, let's just take the break when it's more natural. And once we start traveling around. And at any rate, when you live in a van, there's so many other things to do. Everything just takes time. <laughs> so that's going to fit better. So let's see, forget-me-nots usually have this really, really light, wonderful blue color. That is a bit difficult to achieve um, 
on a glass painting when you already have the background because these colors tend to fuse a bit. So I have to paint layer upon layer until I can get that color that I want. So a lot of these colors are going to disappear a bit again and then I have to add them again on top of each other. So this was a much lighter blue yesterday before I burned it. Ah, but there we are, that's much more a forget-me-not color. So yeah, sadly that's going to probably disappear again, but a bit of it is going to stay. And the next time I paint it, hopefully that's actually how it's going to look in the end. so many wonderful flowers that I would like to learn but it just it takes time to learn a flower by heart and so slowly but surely I can extend my repertoire I had lavender that I've been working a bit on but it's actually quite a much more complicated flower than I thought once I started practicing it so it's not quite ready to make an appearance yet That's the thing about painting from imagination. Once you really know it, it goes faster than to look at something, but you have to learn it by heart first. And sometimes when I start, it seems really easy, and then you look at how they actually grow. And um, one plant, uh, one flower that I really love is a passion flower. But my God, if you looked at that, it's just a, a little piece of art. and. <laughs> There's so much to learn there. And if I want to paint a passion flower in different colors, it could just take ages. So I haven't really dared to, to start. I think that's going to be a project for quite a bit later. It's probably a reason why there are so many more paintings of daffodils than passion flowers. Rahel says, that's good to hear. I understand how difficult it is to take a break from the work if, you, if your work fulfills you so much. It's true that while traveling, you probably rest naturally. Yeah, so that's what we kind of are trying to do anyway, to live a bit more with the seasons and to do things in a more natural way. So you don't, so I don't have to force it too much. And now we're going to be traveling for one or two months. And then I get a natural break instead of having just to kind of artificially just sit around trying desperately not to do anything. Which is just really frustrating. <laughs> and then once we get, uh, so for those of you who don't know, we have, our plan is to buy a farm. And once we get that done, that's not going to be a, a, a farm with lots and lots of animals, but... Um, but if some and I would like to have a garden and so on and there's just going to be a lot more variety to the things that we do and then the breaks and so it's just going to build itself in naturally so you start the morning with kind of doing some work outside and then you get in and have your breakfast so just to get a natural rhythm to it uh, neither me or Lena are very good at forcing these things and living very disciplined lives and then we find it's better to just let your environment and how you live discipline you, or not discipline, just uh, make it into a healthier way of living without it having to be forced too much. Uh, so I know, for instance, in the city where you have to keep going to those infernal, sorry, I know lots of people love them, uh, the training studios and so on. And it just feels very unnatural but of course you have to do it. But it would be so nice to just get the movement that I need and and the time outside and so on in a way that just makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the goal. 
And of course, having a garden would be wonderful for learning new plants because there's nothing better than actually handling the plant uh, in order to learn it and to see it grow because I do like to paint the various stages of a plant too and then having grown it from from seed to flower just gives you a completely different insight as to how the plant works than just to look up some pictures online so yeah, quite a lot of our plans are contingent upon that dream. Um, so a lot of our energy now is going into that. That is also a reason why I've been painting so much, quite apart from the fact that I just love it and I would be doing it anyway. Um, it's in order to make that dream come true. And to have this kind of a natural life that just uh, can flow with the seasons. Because we love that idea too, that for instance now in the summer there is naturally just much more to do and it's a much more fast-paced life. And then winter comes and you just get this natural calm break. Um, so just to yeah, live more and more attuned to the seasons and let that determine a bit more what we do and when we do it and I know that from experience of having lived at a farm um, you, you can just kind of let your let your mind go a bit and just flow with the with the day and with the things that have to be done and and so on. Hello, so glad to catch catch you. Crassy says, "Welcome, Crassy. I'm glad you did." Crassy is also one of the more one of the most uh, loyal live stream followers, uh, and I am very glad to have you here. And Rahel says hello to Crassy too, because as fellow live stream followers, they now know each other a bit. So yeah, to finish that thought, the farm farm plans are definitely what is um, really in our minds at the moment. Krasi says, hello, everybody. It's very nice. And Creative Kunstreise says, hello to Krasi. Creative Kunstreise has been here too, quite a bit. And I actually lived, uh, that was wonderful too. I lived in a tent for a while, in a yurt. And then you just really get those seasons. I was really looking forward to your next live, Joachim. <laughs> That's good. Well, here it is. I'm so glad. Hi, Cressy. Kapoor says. These are more and more people that have found a little space here. Yeah, I'm so glad you caught the, caught the stream. I tried to make a little announcement beforehand this time. But I only, uh, I only uh, realized that I wanted to do a live stream an hour ago. Well, uh, one and a half hours ago now. And so there wasn't much time to announce it. So for those of you who have just joined, I am painting forget-me-nots. I'm trying to find that perfect blue, light blue color that they have. It's going to be one of the first plants that I plant in my garden once I acquire it. I hope I didn't miss too much of it. No, I don't think you did. You missed about half an hour, which is just about the beginning. We all did. I was so happy. Just came home from a stressful day and now I can relax. Watch, listen and write with you all. That's so wonderful. Kreativ Kunstreisen. 
yeah so you can just open this little space here uh, yeah so i'm definitely going to be announcing these a bit further ahead and to get back to these forget-me-nots they are one of the flowers that actually grow naturally in norway and there aren't too many of those um so i really 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 love them so for instance iris that i've painted before rhododendron they are not at all at home in norway and wouldn't survive without humans but forget me nots do And yeah, I can really recommend finding something to do alongside with this stream. It's going to go on for a while. I have quite a, I have another, <laughs> another glass with forget-me-nots so I can keep the theme going for a little while. Mm. So yeah, while I don't have my garden yet, I am busily in my mind planning what i would like there to be in it and one of my absolutely favorite flowers is really is passion flower but uh, sadly no i have to plant it every again every year but that is what i will hopefully at some point have um a greenhouse for would just be so lovely to be able to grow these plants myself and to have them around me even in winter i always wanted my studio where i paint to be more like a greenhouse that at some point when i was about 19 i actually made a greenhouse out of my veranda and just stuffed it full with all plants I could get my hands on and I planted every every fruit that I could buy in the convenience store I planted in order to just get as much greenery as possible and ever since then I have been longing to get back to that greenhouse feel But since we're traveling quite around quite a bit, I can't really have many plants uh, uh, here now because they would all die once we start traveling around. So in the same way that Lena desperately would like to have horses, I would desperately like to have a garden and a greenhouse. A lot of the plants that I really like too are quite tropical ones. So even though I don't paint them, and I think that is going to change if I can have them around me a bit more. For instance, banana plants. It's one of my absolute favorite. Um, their leaves are just wonderful. But there are shockingly few tropical plants that grow in Norway. Let's see, I think we've almost gotten around once. And I think that probably means that uh, we can jump over to the next one. I don't have another flower, um, except for the other forget-me-not, and that might be the one that I wanted to do next. I did think I wanted to start a few new ones. That might actually be fun. Maybe we'll just do... Um, clear a one that only has a background and i can paint the flowers from scratch i think that might actually be nice because now i've just done the highlights um and it might be fun to see the entire process so 
let's see what kind of colors are going to be. Thank you. Very beautiful. Um, I am oh, this one. So I think I can do a uh, forget me not candle glass from scratch. So this is just going to be the background. So you saw what I did this time on um, the candle that I just painted on had already been painted with one layer and I just paint that in blue just to have the background and then later um, there's going to be yeah so for instance what I did now is just to accentuate the colors and so on and there's going to be more layers to that one too so I think we can do one from scratch here and I'm just trying to figure out what kind of brushes I need for this question will be how close they should be. So how big? But I think they could be quite big actually. They were very small on the other one and it's hardly possible to see the flowers. And I think with that bigger one, I actually found that a different brush just worked much better. It looks like a sunset. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the wonderful thing with these candle glasses. Is that they will often look like that without having to do too much. Because once you put that candle in, you have your sun. And that's one of the things that I really love with painting candle glasses is to have that, that uh, true light source. I always wanted to have a true light source. And with candle glasses, I actually do. I was just about to say the same. <laughs> Faria says. Yes, I, I really, I really like that. That part about, um, about painting on, can on glass. Then we can have our forget-me-nots in the sun. I always like this when I find that I can paint one plant almost entirely with one type of brush. It just makes everything so much easier. And I like having these bigger uh, Chinese brushes because in one stroke you get quite a lot of the shape of the leaf um, and the contours and the, um, the lines. And I did, um, did, I have spent quite a bit of time learning techniques from Chinese landscape painting. And I always loved that as aspect of it. Uh, the way they use their brushes is just wonderful. Obviously, the fact that they write with their brushes too just means that they had so much more experience and so much more traditions about, about brushwork that there's just a lot to learn there. And when you use one brush, brush stroke for uh, most things, you, you get the natural lines. So you get the natural lines in the leaves and so on. And 
it looks very different than if you as people as you will often do is but uh, is to just draw the line first and then color it in then you won't get any of that So for anyone who paints, I can hardly recommend acquiring a few of these Chinese brushes too. Because you'll find you can just do other things with them than you can with the, new, uh, the normal Western style brushes. And actually in the opposite direction, I don't really think there is anything you can't do with these kind of brushes. Although I do use the other brushes a lot too. Um, these really are unsurpassed in their versatility. Have you studied Chinese writing? You mentioned Chinese painting styles often. Yeah, yes, I have. I did spend uh, a year uh, with a private tutor uh, learning Chinese and uh, learning Chinese writing. Um, so yeah, I have studied Chinese writing too, <laughs> which is uh, which was a part of it, and so that's uh, how I fell in love with uh, with it. So I studied on my own and a bit at university, uh, Chinese uh, history and Chinese writing and Chinese uh, Chinese. So I, I don't speak it well, and uh, but I can I can smatter a bit and make myself understood enough to get to the train station. Um, yeah, <laughs> you draw a line and it becomes a beautiful leaf. Try for hours to draw a leaf, but in the end it does not. <laughs> wow, amazing! How was it? Well, it's wonderful. I love the Chinese uh, language and the the culture. Um. It's uh, it's very interesting because it's just so much that you already know. So they kind of did everything that we did in the in the West, just a bit differently. So it's really interesting. It all seems so familiar and yet so alien. Um, it was incredibly interesting. Do you consider having some products with Chinese writing on them? Well. <laughs> Uh, I have to admit that no, it it feels a bit for me like painting animals or humans into my painting, which I don't do either. And it's a bit um, appropriation, I find. It is, in the end, it isn't my culture. Um, so I use a lot of their techniques, but I haven't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I got that. So no, I don't think I'm going to be doing that, but... Um, but for the style, I, I absolutely am using a lot of that. And in China, the wonderful thing, and I think you'll appreciate this, is that they, because in the West, that's important to have first, landscape painting was seen as one of the meanest ways of painting. So obviously there was portrait painting first and so on, and landscape painting, for quite a while we didn't really do it. But in China, landscape painting was seen as the highest form of art, and especially uh, from imagination. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. I don't mean inside your paintings, but it's just separate. Oh, right. Yeah, well, no, I did quite a lot of calligraphy, but um, I don't so much now. So I'm not a calligrapher. Uh, so in the end, I think I'm just going to be using that uh, to inform my painting. But I do, I do love the, I love the characters and I love the form of writing. And that's, it's also the Chinese landscape painting styles that have inspired me to do quite a lot just with blue. Because they used a lot of their painting was just in one color. And I know that there was a Chinese painter who said that you can paint every color you want to with just black and white. And <laughs> there's something to that. Just with the shading. 
And their landscape tradition is just so much longer uh, than the one we had in, have in the West. Ah, my friend Major is traditional Chinese, old oh, Chinese, traditional Chinese painting. I told the stars about you, says. Oh, that sounds incredible. Yeah, so something, if I, uh, in my next life, uh, or perhaps in this life, <laughs> I would like to study a lot more of that. Where would you like to travel next time? Well, so our travels now are obviously going to be in Norway, um, and together our plans to travel are more in the northern hemisphere around here. So that would probably be more like Iceland, Scotland, Finland. But since we're on the topic, I would definitely like to go back to China. I was there once. And there is so much more than I would like to see. I just did a little round trip there. Uh, but there's just so much more that I would like to see. Hello from Mars, BRW. Uh, you, <laughs> BRW is another one uh, who has been following these streams for a while now. Welcome, BRW. Um, yeah, so to the travel. It's uh, mostly northern countries for now, probably. Um... I would like to go, in China, I would like to go back to Harbin, which is one of the most wonderful cities I found, which is in northern China. And I would like, I went in the summer, which is beautiful. And it's a relief because the Chinese summer is just a killer, especially for us Norwegians. But the summer in Harbin up north is just wonderful. Um, but yeah, so Scotland is a place that we would love to visit. The landscape is just mesmerizingly beautiful. The highlands. I would very much like to visit the Baltic states. Uh, I've been to quite, quite a lot of Europe, but I haven't been there. A lot of the north still misses for me. Is still missing. Um, but there's just an, an enormous amount of the world that I have not seen, and I would like to see. <laughs> And Lena has not really been, and I have myself haven't really been much on the western coast of Norway, so we would like to see that too. Uh, Harbin is a lovely city. Oh, you've been there? Or you know about it? Yeah, Harbin is just wonderful. Um, and the nature around, um, and the people in Harbin, it was just such a lovely atmosphere. And live music and people on the squares just standing around. Uh painting Chinese uh, signs on the, uh, on the, um, on the street. <laughs> it was just brilliant. Iceland and Scotland seems amazing to me too, Krasi says. Yeah, I really, I, I really want to visit those places. Lena has already been to Iceland and we might very well be interested in owning Iceland horses because those are the ones that we, that would fit very well in Norway and the ones that I actually know a bit. Because uh, where I, the farm I lived on, she had Iceland horses, and they're just wonderful. And I would like to visit those um, wonderful mountains in, uh, I think, in Hunan province in China. You know, the ones that were, that, um, I think, uh, what movie was it now again? Uh, Avatar <laughs> took inspiration from those mountains. They're just incredible mountains in Hunan. I wasn't any further south than uh, Shanghai. And I would like to see more of the south too. And in Xi'an, I went to the Flower Mountain, which was incredible. So those, those Chinese mountains are just incredible. I would like to paint a bit of them, but I need to experience them again. They look so different than the ones we know here. How would your dream farm look like? Oh, we have a question there that I can spend some time on now. Oh, uh, Sangjia Ye. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Sangjia uh, Ye. No, I think the, the uh, Huachan was the mountain. But, oh, those mountains. Yes, the mountains chain in Hunan. Yeah, those are the ones. Yes, those uh, the, they they just they just seem incredible. My teacher was from there, and uh, it 
quite a bit about those mountains. Uh, so the dream farm, that is a very, very big question. So our dream farm is uh, far removed from everyone else. Um, it's secluded. Uh, it has perhaps a little stream or a little lake. It uh, is old. Um, it uh, grows in a spruce forest uh, that is important, especially to Lena and to me too. Um, it um, has its own road going to it. This is important. No cars are going to be driving by. You know, so that feeling when you drive off the main road and then you drive a bit further into the forest and then suddenly you're on a dirt road and you're just noticing that you're leaving everything behind and you're entering a new realm, a new world and everything, you can just forget about everything else. Things just fall away and the closer you come, you can just feel the change and you can just hear the silence. And once you're there, I would like to have, a, you know, an arch with with um, plants above so you really enter the farm and enter this world. I think much more than just a farm, I would like it to be its own world. It's something I always wanted to, uh, that's what I make in my paintings, that's what I did when I was a child and that's what I want to continue to do, is to create uh, create worlds. And that's very much what I would like to do where we live too. So much more than the practical things that are going to be there. The feeling of the place is just so important. This secluded and yet open feeling. So trees that are taller than the farm, but not in the, truly in them, drowned out by them so that you still have space, but you're in your own little world. And uh, there's nothing else. You can just, you can hear the the river and yeah just be in your completely own space and own world and I'd like to spend a lot of time with the garden around there have trees around that are never going to be chopped down to just get this old feeling too to just get this really secluded world that just can grow on its own and yeah i think that's that that's the feeling of the dream farm i do not speak english well and i do not fully understand what you're saying but when you talk about the dream farm it is as if you are reading a poem <laughs> thank you <laughs> well a lot of energy and wishes and hopes are are there so I, I, I can't wait for us to, to find it. And so that's what we're going to be doing now. We're just going to be driving around and we're pretty sure that our dream farm isn't going to be listed anywhere. We're just going to be driving around and hopefully we can find it and then get in contact with whomsoever um, would like to sell us that farm. Um And I would like there to be some mountains nearby uh, so that it's possible to, within riding distance, to get up onto the highlands above the tree line, which isn't uh, very, uh, you don't have to go high up in Norway to get above the tree line. And there's just something magical happens when you get there. When you get above the tree line, you're just on top of the world. It sounds so beautiful. I'm so excited for you to finally make your dream become your reality, Rahel. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, of course, it could very well be that it's... Um, well, uh, we have basically decided that it can't be. It It is going to happen this year. <laughs> but, of course, uh, there. I suppose that there is a remote possibility that we won't find it this year. But... 
we are going to behave anyway, as though it is for uh, certain, and then we will take whatever happens, and we won't settle, so we have time, of course. Um, but we really, really want to find this place and start to make it our own. And I would so love to have a forest nearby that that can just grow, that we can preserve, that isn't going to be cut down. And yeah. And in the spring, now would be the time that I can start planting and organizing the garden. I would like to have the garden that's something, a mix between something that's uh, tended and wild. Because I don't think it's it doesn't need to be an English garden. It it does. It shouldn't be an an English over tended garden. More um, something that's in harmony, where the plants can grow quite freely, and I can just tend and make sure that all plants get their space, and nothing overtakes everything else, and so on. So, that's the plan. And. Uh, it's just we have so many different plants there and Lena can't really wait to start making videos from there. And I need more space too for painting. Every time I paint something else, I have to clean out my entire desk <laughs> to make room. And it's getting more and more now, because I have glass, I have porcelain, I have oil painting, and I have different things for my oil painting too. And then I know I had lanterns, I'm going to have books, I have... It's just such... <laughs> it's getting... There, there are more and more things uh, that I need space for. And our, uh, where we pack uh, the things that we sell, we need a room for two. So the practical things are, it's getting cramped <laughs> eventually here. So just to have space would just be amazing. Just, you know, room to, room to grow, room to create. And both me and Lena would just love to create more. I love the way you're approaching this and going with the flow and what feels right. I don't think you can precisely plan out your future. This feels like truly living to the fullest, Sion says. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Trina, hello to you. Hi, Joachim. You caught this one in between work. <laughs> we see this a lot in the psychological professions. People wanting to move away from the cities and the stress. Overstimulation is a huge factor now. All oh, right, oh, that's interesting that you say that. Yeah, exactly that. There's so much going on. And I really feel for the people that are still... Of course, a lot of people can really uh, enjoy and have a great time in the city, but for those people who would like to leave and are stuck, I really feel for you, um, for those people. And uh, that's interesting that you see that in your profession. I think that's going to be more and more, especially if you have all of your basic needs met. I mean, that was one of the big reasons why everyone flocked to the city because we just, you, people, you just needed a job. And but now that a lot of that, for for at least some of us, um, we have those basic needs met, other things become clearer, and then it's uh, time for at least some of us to move out again. And if we can at least contribute to those of you who either can't leave the city, don't want to leave the city, um, to have this little part of it, uh, that that would be lovely. Because, of course, we don't all need to do it. If we can create these spaces and we can share these experiences, I think that can be quite uh, quite helpful, too. Um so yeah, and of course it's helpful that <coughs> both me and Lena have already lived on a farm, so we already know 
how that goes and how to live in nature. I think, uh, of course, it is dangerous for a lot of people to think that they would like to do these things and then they find that, oh, they hate it and they need the stimulation. But yeah, I can, I can really understand the overstimulation part. Uh, there's just so much going on. All right, then we have uh, done this one once. Since home office became normal for my job, I really don't mind the city anymore. <laughs> I can also often go to another place of ours outside the city to relax. All right, yeah, I get that. Absolutely. So I'm not saying that it's bad. Uh, it's just that we don't want to live in the city. Um, but then it's important that the city is there and that people enjoy it and that we can come and visit you guys in the cities. And uh, we can share in the things that we all make for one another. <laughs> Trina says hello to Crossy. All right, let's see. I think now I'm going to continue on a landscape that I started yesterday. So I'll just put this one to the side. And in the, this is actually a bit in the Chinese style again. And I'm just going to paint another layer on it. And just uh, get one just a step closer to us. This is going to be just a far off background. And then the next stage now is to just get a wee bit closer. So let's see here. Let's move that sun to a spot, at least for now, where it could be. No way it looks like Bornholm, Denmark. <laughs> Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so here I have done a lot. Um, this, this I was very much inspired by the way the Chinese do it. And so that's what I've done here to create the entire landscape just based on brush strokes and one color. And that's what I'm going to continue. And this is the nice part too, which is being able to use one brush for the entire painting. And just these really soft colors. See, I think I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna keep it uh, quite a bit like this. Maybe some darker shades in front uh, in the end. But I really like this just very soft feel to the painting. I was quite sad, Joachim, when you guys launched new pieces. I went back to get another one of your cups, but it was gone. <laughs> so just one this time. <laughs> Well, it goes pretty quickly, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If you uh, have found something you want and you want exactly that, then they can go uh, pretty fast because obviously everything that we have out there is uh, is a unique piece. Yeah, I'm quite blown away with how many... Um, regular customers we have now uh, I, I'm really very grateful that 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 means that at least something's right uh, <laughs> and it's really wonderful you have so many people that uh, come back for more it's always the the danger that people are just gonna buy once and that's that's it and uh, yeah so we have a lot of regulars now and it's it's really wonderful
and it really wants me uh, wants to uh, gets me to want to up my game and keep developing and i think the next idea will be really wonderful so i talked about this already but um i can <laughs> which one trina grassy asks maybe i stole it from you so yeah the next idea is uh, books so it'll be um kind of a sketchbook in a way there's a wonderful uh, people that create uh, wooden books with the uh, wooden covers in the Ukraine. We're going to buy some books from there. And I'm going to be painting landscape paintings on the cover. Uh, and I think that's going to be really nice. Can't wait to get it, Krasi says. Yeah, it's on its way. It's uh, it's on its way. I really hope that it gets safely to you. I think the books are actually going to be a very nice addition to the store. Now that we have the tiny little wooden talismans, I have. I can always use more oil painting things because I the glasses. Um, I have quite a lot to do with uh, with painting on glasses, and I can't really paint them fast enough at any rate. So to have more things to paint on glass isn't really. Um, too important because uh, I only have so much time but I have a bit more time for more oil painting and I think uh, those books can be quite nice so they're going to be um, entire landscape paintings exactly how I make them on paintings I'm just going to paint them on on books oh god Krasi I'll have a look let me check <laughs> so excited as well I'm in Denmark so it's like compost nur rush <laughs> to me <laughs> Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> yeah, Denmark should go pretty fast. I didn't know that you had post snow too, but sure, they're in entire Scandinavia. <laughs> I hope so too. I'm not trusting BG Bulgaria, maybe, post uh, <laughs> a lot, but I hope they prove me wrong. I hope so too. I am sure it'll be fine. There are times that either it takes a bit longer or it um, or such different things happen, but everything has actually gotten to its destination so far, uh, except for one return, but uh, at least nothing's been lost, which I'm quite surprised about because we've um, happily, because we've sent about 200 and something packages now. Uh, thankfully, they're doing a pretty good job delivering them all over the world. Oh, this was a mistake. I wanted to have a river there, I think. Yeah, I quite forgot. I think I made this so that I could plop down a little river. Just some really light work there, too. See, especially for the river, that's just going to be a very basic outline first. And then I have to burn it once. Uh, and uh, then it can get a bit more proper afterwards. Let's see here. So just some really soft... That's the main problem with painting rivers on these glass paintings, is that when I paint with white, it doesn't actually accentuate so much as obfuscate. Um, but then if I paint it a bit darker around it, then it'll actually look lighter. But that's going to come later. Let's see here. I really like this so far, Cressy says. Oh, thank you. I hope it's going to turn out 
well, uh, quite a few layers still ahead of it. Crossy, I got the Into the Fields cup, but I went back for the green, <laughs> pine greens as well. But it was gone with the wind. <laughs> oh, isn't that the pine greens? No, I think I don't think that was the one. I think Birch's was the one that Crassy bought. I'm pretty sure. I cannot remember who got pine greens. <laughs> Yes, Burgess, right. Crazy got my first uh, birch cup. Hi, Sierra says. Hi to you. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Leaf says too. Well, hi to you. I don't know if you've been here for longer, but welcome. Let me know. Maybe I can persuade this person to give it. <laughs> Let's not have a black market in the <laughs> in the cups now. <laughs> We can make a little uh, trading page onto our site. <laughs> I am starting to become suspicious that some people have started collecting them, though. Which is quite all right. But some of our regular customers have started buying in bulk. And that was obviously uh, mostly uh, Christmas time, so I suppose those were for presents. But I, I have my suspicions that there might be some collectors already. No, we wouldn't collect it. <laughs> well, that is very much okay. But uh, I always get a bit shocked when suddenly six cups have been bought at once from the same person. <laughs> With that, 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 uh, that, that, I think was for a present. But I, I have my suspicions. Crossy is not convinced. <laughs> well, I mean, it's wonderful that people like it enough to start their own collections. And I suppose there are themes, so maybe at some point there can be some value into having all the all the birches cups or all the <laughs> all the sunset ones and so on i've been trying to calculate i mean if i'm going to keep painting at this rate then there are just an enormous amount that are going to be living all over the world I do need some new ideas uh, every now and again for my candle glasses and for my cups. Uh, this year I've been painting so much more than I ever, ever have. And all the ideas that I started with are kind of running dry. 
thankfully quite a few more keep coming, but um, I never thought I would be painting this much. <laughs> Gina says, I'm most definitely not going to try to make my husband buy me one as a birthday present this year. <laughs> well, just be in time. You can, I, you probably, you're going to get, uh, you probably already <laughs> you have our business card. You can just leave it on his desk. And if you buy quite a lot of our things, I suppose you're going to be acquiring quite a lot of Lena's postcards too, because you get three with every every uh, package that we send. <laughs> and I think, yeah, we're gonna, Lena just does a wonderful job packing. It's, uh, I mentioned this, but it's Lena who packs them and I really love the, the the thought and energies he puts into it. Maybe your travels will provide you with new ideas and inspiration. Rahel says, yes, that is exactly my hope. I know, her postcard looks amazing, Trina says. I don't even want to give them away. <laughs> yeah, I really like that little uh, touch. So yeah, that's true, Rahel. I that's exactly, that's what I want to use uh, our travels for, is exactly that. To travel and get some new ideas and uh, get new inspiration. Lena gave me a trip to a glacier uh, for this summer as a present for my birthday. And I hope to paint quite a few glaciers after, after we've done that, for instance. So I really, yeah, I, I definitely want to use our travels for new inspiration. should start painting phone cases and iPod cases. <laughs> well, I did think about that uh, uh, a while ago, but uh, I know how people um, go about handling their iPhones. I know how my, I handle mine. Uh, and it's not respectful enough for my taste. So that's why I want to be... I, I'm going to be painting books because uh, they... And uh, not just uh, scan, not just easy notebooks, but actually quite substantial sketchbooks and things that you can actually use for your more personal things. Um, so I think that's probably the reason for that. <laughs> I'd buy one, Trina says. Yeah, well, it's, uh, there's just something. I don't know, I, I did want to do it for a while. But there's just something not uh, peaceful enough about computers and iPhones. Uh, and books are just so much more traditional that I am. Um, I'm going to do that first at any rate. And I would like people to then hopefully handle it with some care. Because I mean, how many times a day do I drop my phone? I love the idea with the book, Siam says. Well, that's good. Thank you. Who would like for Joachim to write and also make his own book so he could buy that also? I'm not sure what I would do with my own book. <laughs> Gabor likes the idea of the books too. That's that's really good. Thank you. I really, I'm really excited about that. Uh, my own book, I am not entirely sure what I would put in my own book. But um, I can be painting books and then you guys can fill it with wonderful, wonderful things and stories, and writings, and paintings, and drawings. I really like that idea that something that I've been painting uh, is then used by creative people to do creative things. <laughs> and I'm not sure what I would write, Trina. <laughs> I think my my main 
task here is uh, is to paint on this earth all right now gone around this one once so it's time for the next one let us see, I am not entirely sure which one, or maybe in kind of an autumn thing this time. No need to write much sketches and beautiful small guides. <laughs> oh, that's actually not such a bad idea. Maybe at some point. Uh, let's see, I think maybe some... I was painting on this one, and it's going to be kind of an autumn, autumn view glass. So I think, yeah, let's see what we can do with that. And let's find my colors here. I can give you guys a little look at my mess that I have here with the. Uh, of my colors and so on so whenever I reach over to try to find a color this is what I'm reaching for and here are all the unpainted glasses and that's a poster by Lena <laughs> and here we are back so I'm just gonna reach into this mess and try to find brown oh there we are hoping that none of you can hear what I am listening to because uh, most of it it's a playlist with um, very calm very silent still relaxing classical music but suddenly I had an opera on my ear here and I can't change it <laughs> I had some screaming in my ear are you doing any more miniature painting those really tiny ones yes I'm going to be doing lots more of those so that's not a one-time thing uh, we've already made quite a few new ones that Lena is going to prepare for me to paint on. Uh, uh, but I'm not going to paint on any of those today, if that is the question. But uh, I am going to do quite a lot more of those. I think almost every time we have an opening, I'm going to have a few of those as well. Because I just I really like that process. And so definitely. With the candle flame, it often looks like a sunset seems. Yes, I love that effect. That is one of my uh, favorite things about these candle glasses. Okay, yeah, so I think autumn views here. So with these leaves, I'm just gonna, if they look a bit um, sad, <laughs> that's because I'm going to, this is gonna be autumn. And so the idea is that these leaves have wilted. And um, yeah, and it's going to be more, the colors are going to be brighter. But uh, I have to burn it once, as always with these, until I can do that. And here we are back with the Chinese brush again. And I love painting with it. Cool, would love to see a live stream with a miniature painting one day. Oh, definitely. I did one with a, with a miniature, so that's on my YouTube. I did one miniature, um, one that you can see in one of the live streams. I think the last live stream, I did one of those. And I'll be doing much more of those, and I definitely put them in my live streams. Wouldn't call it a mess. All people who paint are the same, I think. <laughs> Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, that was for my uh, <laughs> for my color situation here. Yeah, I think the the thing is that I'm just much more uh, focused on what I'm painting and so on. And then while I paint, I just reach for things and let them fall wherever. 
What would you do if you make a mistake? Oh, well, uh, work roll, gotta go, guys. Okay, Trina, thank you for being here and see you next time, maybe. Uh, what do you do if you make a mistake? Well, uh, for this one, it's actually really easy. Um, you can just remove it. So like this one, I could just do this uh, because it's uh, on glass and everything has already been burned once. So I can just completely remove it. But in an oil painting, for instance, um, I will often have to use that mistake because I can't just remove it because then I would remove the background too. And for something like that, I would try to use the mistake. Uh, and paint something out of it. For instance, if I have a black dot in the middle of a painting, often I'll just make that into a tree or something. Uh, so that's what I usually do then. Um, but with uh, with a candle glass like this, it's not a big problem because um, it's all been burned. So I can remove everything. And if I can't, I'll do that too. So if I'm, if I would do something like this, then I would just okay, fine. Then that's a leaf. So that's uh, one of the th good things. I paint from imagination here, and that means that nothing is set. So if I make a mistake, I can use that mistake and create some kind of a plant out of it. I think one of my larger mistakes was, um, well, that wasn't a mistake, that I had a cat walk over my painting. Suddenly I had a cat's paw in the middle. And that then became a mountain. So any mistake can always be used in a creative way. here I think we can fill this uh, painting with quite a lot of plants and then as I said once it's burned I can accentuate these uh, leaves and so on so it looks a bit like a mess here uh, with leaves just on top of leaves on top of leaves but that's gonna make more sense once it's burned and I can get some of those leaves more in front for instance with uh, highlights and shadows These are some of the plants that grow here in abundance in autumn, and they have wonderful colors. But I want the just the brown background first, and then I can add on top of it. And I think quite a lot of different plants would be nice. I'm just gonna do them all in the same color um, but different kinds. When? I am not entirely sure what you mean. When? You're gonna have to explain that a bit. Oops, <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, that that did came a bit out of come a bit out of nowhere. <laughs> That's quite alright. <laughs> and it was written in caps too, so I got a bit intimidated there. admit I'm not entirely sure what kind of a plant this is but I'm sure it exists somewhere it does now anyway
Uh, when you paint from your imagination, do you often take inspiration from your surroundings? Yeah, all right. Uh, yes, I absolutely do. So I like to say that I paint from imagination and memory. And the memory part is my surroundings. So I very much take inspiration from my surroundings. That's what I draw upon. Uh, which is also the reason why I de desperately need to travel a bit more to see more things that I can then paint. Um, because uh, I do want to paint uh, quite naturalistically while I paint from imagination. So I need something to draw on. And my inspiration is absolutely, it is nature. It is what's around me. Um, so most definitely. So while, for instance, I'm painting autumn now, but what I'm drawing on are memories from last autumn. Um, and if I'm in the mountains, uh, a lot of my paintings will look... So the, if I am somewhere for extended periods of time, what I paint will slowly but surely look like where I am, even though I'm not uh, directly painting from where I am. Uh, it'll definitely look like it at some point. I remember I studied in Australia for a little while, and after a while, all my drawings, all my trees started look, to look very strange, the way Australian trees do. And I didn't do it consciously, but um, that is most definitely what I do. So here maybe it would be nice to actually have some um, some landscape in the background. So I think I'm not going to be painting too much on top of it. I've done so many uh, candles with just uh, very monotonous, um, the same thing around the entire thing. And I think here it would be nice to have a landscape. So I'm just going to make a little foreground. And I can paint a landscape in later. So yeah, I uh, most definitely paint based upon my surroundings, which is one of the reasons why I'm so happy now that there's spring and I can finally get some new ideas because it's been a long winter and as much as I love winter, at some point I didn't really feel very much inspired by it uh, and I was just ready for something else. spring comes and just all different colors and yeah everything just changes and lots and lots of new things that can inspire me I think it's we're getting towards the beginning, at least, of the end of this live stream. I think we're going to paint for a little bit longer. But I have some things to do and I have some packages to send off. I can hear the birds outside your home. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it is spring. And I am definitely, I'm probably going to do some live streams while we're out... Um, to see if that even works but I think I'm going to try to do some live streams on the road too and that's going to be outside which is really nice to sit outside and paint and I would like to take you guys along for for that yeah I could probably open up the window actually at some point and uh, 
the thing is that we're actually we are quite uh, to ourselves here but there is a main road not too far away but it is quite far away but it's down in the valley so we can hear it all the way up here and that kind of would ruin the ambience but when we're on the road yeah, when we find a more secluded area that could be pretty nice to just be outside and have all the nature sounds and uh, thankfully for nature sounds i think there's no copyright and i could have that as a background to the live stream and i think that would be really nice so i'm going to take all of my oil painting well not all of them i'm going to take my old painting things with me for the travels and be painting quite a lot i was thinking about a live stream outside that would be so lovely rohel says yeah i think so i think that would be just wonderful and uh, everyone that's with me on the live stream can get a bit of that feel too it's this wonderful fresh outside feeling i think that might be nice and i can do I can pan it out a bit so it's possible to see a bit of the the nature around there too <laughs> crossy says that would be amazing yeah i'm well if you guys are this enthusiastic about it i will definitely do it Painting outside is just wonderful. So even though I don't paint directly from things outside, it's still like, very inspiring. And it's just really a joy to, to be outside and paint. I'd even love to hear the bird's life and even the wind. Yeah, yeah, so I think the wind shouldn't be uh, much of an issue. That's actually just going to be nice. And maybe in the close to stream or... Yeah, at different points, I think, uh, on our travels, I'll be doing some live streams and just using that, that uh, ambience as a backdrop. I think that'll be really nice. Like being one with nature. Yes, definitely. All right, so I think, I think that's it for now. I will be doing another live stream pretty soon. I'm going to give all of you a chance to say goodbye because this is going to be it for the live stream for today. I would enjoy that as well, Siam says. Well, that's good. Uh, that is very good. Yes, yeah, so I'll definitely be doing that. So... I'll be doing, I think, a few more live streams. It's really nice, and especially if I find myself a bit in a, if I need some um, more stimulation. Uh, it's actually really nice to have these live streams. So I think I'll be doing a few more of them. I took a little break now. I had quite a lot to do and some different things for YouTube I wanted to try out. But I just really like this format. Crossy says, thank you so much, Joachim. I love the time here as well. Thank you. I always, I really enjoy these, this time here. And you guys are such a support. A wonderful evening, everyone, Rahel says. Thank you, Joachim. That was so beautiful, as always. Thank you. How often do you live stream? I would love to come more often. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's incredibly irregular. So sometimes I do quite a few of them. And sometimes uh, it can take a week or two or three between. So I can't really say too much. Goodbye. Thank you and see you soon, hopefully, Creative Kulsterizer says. Thank you for a wonderful stream from Siam. Thank you. Cheers. Very Australian goodbye from Walter Watlerberry. Yeah, so thank you all for joining me here. Lou's Adventure says goodbye. Elizabeth says hello, guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. This has, We are just saying goodbye now. But I will be doing a new live stream in maybe even tomorrow it was the first time i came to the live stream really enjoyed gabor says well that's good that is really good so next live stream i will be announcing it um, um <laughs> much earlier than i did this time so that you guys will get a chance to stop by and uh, yeah so i'll be saying goodbye for now and until next time <laughs>